welcome to the Your Message Received podcast. And now, taking your message to the finish line, your host, John Duffin. Hey folks, John Duffin here, Duffin Media. Welcome back to another message of Your Message Received. Your message received is the place, the home, the platform to help you find your best, most true, authentic business voice. Heck, your most authentic voice. Get what you want, find what you need, improve your results, meet the person of your dreams, make billions upon billions of dollars. That's what today's guest is going to solidify for us. Uh, And if he can't, well then, we'll save that for a future episode. But all the rest of this stuff works. And we love that you keep showing up for us and liking and sharing, and we appreciate all of it, whether you're listening anywhere you get your podcasts, or watching us on YouTube means the world to us folks. And the reason I get continually convinced that you keep showing up is because I get to bring on way cool people who walk the walk. Like our friend, returning guests, and we've gotten to do a bunch of collab stuff together. And the best part is getting to call a friend. Summit Chasers Networks, Zach Carlin. Welcome back, buddy. Thank you. Happy to be here. And uh, might I just add with the billions of dollars thing, your results may vary, but it could happen. May, know. But I'm More believing it'll still work. For, I mean, yeah. well, Zach, put it this way. If they don't get it, it's probably on them. I mean, or I mean, if they just don't get it, I mean, it's still millions. So hundreds <laughs> of millions, tens of millions. So, I mean, it's set your, what, what's that, that saying? Set your... Shoot oh, for set the, stars. the bar so high. Shoot, well, sh- shoot for the stars and be okay if you land on the moon. So listen up, folks. Zach has a handout with the exact ways to get at least those millions. So make certain that you that you come back to us and ask us. And if we, we're not able to take the call, we will get back to you soon. But mm-hmm. folks, meanwhile, our man. Zach Carlin, who has gotten to do a number of things. One of the things that I am so impressed by is the amount of positive things going on. As I said, Zach is the co-founder with his wife, Aldrina, of the Summit Chasers Network, where their mission happens to be is for the success of small businesses to be expected rather than an anomaly. And it all ties to the personal and business foundations. How do I know that? Because Zach has allowed me to collaborate with him a bunch of times. So it is ingrained in all of those things. Um, Zach, right now, what would you say is one of the more enjoyable things that you are able to be doing right now at Summit Chasers uh, at the network? Oh, over at the network. Yeah, no, there's quite a few things. So we'll, we'll, we'll say, we'll keep it on the business side for right now. And then I'll go over yeah, to some yeah. But from a business perspective, I mean, I'll, I'll, you know, sticking with the obvious, I mean, working with some of the business owners and founders that we are currently and have been working with has been unbelievable. It was, it's almost been one of those things. And I've worked with business owners for, I mean, I had an agency beforehand. So I've been mm-hmm. working with business owners, bigger businesses too, um, for the last almost a decade. But it still astounds me the, the the type of people, the the good people, the hardworking people, the visionaries, the ideas that people get, the innovations that people that they look in places that I didn't even know there's a place to look. So just mm-hmm. to get to meet some of these people and, and kind of be able to pick their brains and, and help them give them the platform, the foundation to to really prosper and kind of you know create that that pedestal, I guess, for their that launching pad for their ideas and passions and that kind of stuff is just, it's so cool. It's so cool. I just had, a, I just had a conversation with a, a guy who we, um, we're, we're, we signed on to work with us where he is building a, uh, an app where he sells and he's going to be selling it to like clothing brands. One of the brands that he wants to work with a really bad is Aritzia. I, okay. I, didn't, I didn't know what Aritzia was until my wife, she goes, she's obsessed with the place, but um, where they do virtual, basically it's a virtual fitting room. So it uses AI and, a bunch of other algorithms and all that kind of stuff. So it takes your video, you do a couple twirls, it takes your measurements, and then you have like a virtual fitting room and it creates an avatar for you where it actually, and they use like the like fabric physics. So he said one of the hardest, the hardest uh, positions he's ever had to hire for was a fabric design physicist. 
oh or something God. Like, like that's a thing right so basically what's the difference between how cotton drapes on your body how it fits and how mm -hmm. all these other types of of materials how they fit on your body and how they drape and how they could look and this kind of stuff and the app itself it's it's stunning like you create an avatar and then you pick this dress and then it puts the dress on the avatar and it fits and sways you know according to the fabric and that kind of stuff and then, you know but his his goal is to save a lot of these retail stores and, and these e-commerce tons of money off waste because a lot of it i think it's like especially with women i think the return rate is like about 40 percent right on a lot of their on a lot of their their products and a lot of those they can't use anymore so it's a lot of waste or they they you know have to buy way too much inventory or not enough inventory so they end up wasting or losing customers so to be able to provide that that value is crazy it's cool but it's just to even like think of that and to then say i can figure that out when he doesn't he wasn't innately a software guy but he's like i'll find the people i'll figure it out so to get to work with people like that and help them build the, the foundation so that they can put their ideas out there and really make the difference and make the change, make the impact that they want. So cool. Like, so cool. I don't know that I've, like you said, even some of the terms, like I didn't know the brand, by the way. Uh, and I'm <laughs> glad I appreciate you saying like Audrina tipping you off. Like I, that's, that's, I, I get it. The fabric physicist part. I don't know that I've ever heard that term before. Okay. I love the fact, look, you and, and folks, if you've heard Zach and I before, whether it's on Zach's platforms or here on our podcast, uh, real briefly, so that you know, look, Zach has been a pro athlete, three different sports, took that winning championships, building businesses around phys, uh, fitness, growing to the rate of $30 million a year, working with some of the largest companies prior to establishing Summit Chasers. So it's not as if it came from nothing. But what I'd be curious about in terms of being able to sustain momentum on your own or build it first off, I guess, rather than just go right to sustaining, that it's how are you finding like right now in terms of the types of businesses you're looking for? Mm -hmm or looking to, or what draws you in terms of either you wanting to have a conversation with them or them wanting to have a conversation with you? What draws you? Yeah, no, that's a good question. I think it's, it comes down to like, I, I, I am, and I think a lot of individuals, a lot of us are drawn to authenticity now more than probably mm -hmm. ever because we've mm -hmm. been, been fed, you know, fake for so long. We've been right. fed shortcuts for so long. So I think authenticity is a big one. Like, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to sit here and say, I have an MBA. I have all this, you know, my parents didn't own businesses and that kind of stuff. My parents were nurses. They're very hardworking. I got a mm -hmm. lot of that from them, but a lot of these, a lot of these business owners, they're, they're just like that. They have pat me. They're, they're very passionate about what they're doing and they're very authentic and that they want to solve a problem mm -hmm. or they just want to create a better life for their, for their families or they're experts in a certain discipline of business. Right. But when it comes to how do I put it all together? How do I, how do I give this, how do I, you know, how do I put it out there to the, to the extent where I can actually make a difference and I can, you know, create the community and I can create success, not just for me, but the people on my team and my communities and that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. So a lot of it, I think is just that shared kind of psychography, right? That shared mentality I think yeah. that drives us. Right. But again, these are people that are just so passionate about what they do. Like, mm -hmm. uh, the, another client, another shout out to another client we have, you know, he runs a company where they, they sell sneaker bags. Right. And he's so pat, he's such a good marketer, such a good marketer, such, so good at branding, but he's such a hard worker that it's almost to his detriment. And he's so, so passionate about creating the life that he has three kids. He's so passionate about creating the life for them and being a good example for them and that kind of stuff where he just runs his head into a wall. And okay. he'll, he'll do it as many times as he needs to <laughs> until, until it works. Unfortunately, walls are thick in life. The life walls are thick. <laughs> right. And you, you can't do that forever, right? So it's it's the ability, creating the ability to look at things from a higher level mm -hmm. and allow them the opportunity to really leverage their strengths and their passions to create this abundance of success type of thing. So what I think what attracts us to each other yeah. would be the authenticity and the fact that I've been there. 
Mm -hmm. I've been there and just, I am equally as passionate as they are for their success Mm -hmm. as they are for their own. I think, I think to me, like it's fun to see those sorts of synergies. And I love the fact that like shout out to your parents that you talked about, like said that they they don't need my mind are very, my dad who passed away. So I'll say where or was, and my mom were both blue collar. And, Mm -hmm. and, and, and it's like, I don't think that you need to have the pedigree. I'm also a big believer now too, although in certain aspects and in certain fields, having advanced degrees or even degrees still matters a ton, Mm -hmm. but it doesn't matter to everyone, nor Mm -hmm. should it be to me the first and and, and only criteria. Um, And the authenticity part, you know, that's what we're all about here, man. And that's Mm -hmm. what, and that's what also what drew me to you. Uh, You, to say that you have a fun story, it ain't all fun. Um, folks, listen to our first episode in terms of, of, like I said, the preview of how I know Zach. Mm-hmm. But I will ask you this. Speaking of fun for me, um, one of the things I think about is this. And one of the things that I think about in regards to whether it's the time of year. And folks, if you're listening to us in real time when this is published, well, then it's somewhere approaching summer of 2024 uh if you're listening to us at a future date great (laughs) makes me even happier too um but what i would also add is one of the things that in terms of like an overall an easy question to ask somebody especially as as the seasons change and that sort of thing is well so what you do this summer um zach's got a great story Mm -hmm which to me was one of the reasons I wanted to have my friend back on the show today. Zach, walk me through what we're going to call life on the road for you and your family this summer. (laughs) Foreshadowing. Yeah. So we, um, so one of, one of our premises with summit chasers is to be able to run the business and, and a successful business and grow a business and also be able to, to be able to live the life that you want. A lot, a lot of people look at, you know, like the David Goggins or the, you know, Hermoses and that kind of stuff. And they don't, they don't live the same lives. They, they don't have the same passions, right? They're not going to work 16 hours a day and they're okay doing so until the day they die. They have kids, they have other hobbies, they have other passions. They, they have all these other things that they want to do. It just doesn't fit. And they're just not built like that, which is completely fine. A lot of amazing people aren't. A lot of the most successful people aren't actually. But uh, so we wanted to kind of put our, you know, the premise where our mouth is and uh, mouth is. Mm -hmm. and uh kind of proved that we could do it so when i had been running my other businesses prior i was a a professional athlete when i opened my first my first uh health and wellness facility Mm -hmm. so i have some experience with having you know multiple priorities however no one can really relate to professional athlete in running a business and not a lot of people Mm -hmm. can anyways so i wanted to, to do it in a more and also didn't have kids at the time Mm-hmm. that kind of thing right so i wanted we wanted to prove it we wanted to we wanted to put our money where our mouth is so mm-hmm. i mean we, we needed to change anyways where we were living we didn't we didn't want to be there anymore so we, we thought of a fun idea to transition in between so we sold both of our vehicles i had a nice truck adrena had a i think she had like a range rover or something like that with nice nice vehicles and we bought two jeeps. Too shabby yeah, um, we, 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 got, we bought two jeeps uh jeep gladiators and a tiny trailer that could be pulled with the, the jeeps and we decided we we're going to travel the country uh, while we were running and growing the business. So we we just started working with a couple nonprofits in Georgia, and we mm-hmm. were in Arkansas at the time. So we made our way over to Atlanta to start, and we worked with uh, the Chamber of Commerce over in Atlanta, the Gwinnett County Chamber of Commerce, and we worked with a lot of the the nonprofits that were part of that that chamber. We got to meet some amazing kids that they were working with, helping kids get off the streets, um, giving them finance education, getting them back in school, giving them places to live and this kind of stuff. So we, we started working with some of those teenagers too for professional development as well. And none of that we wouldn't be able to do if we didn't pack up and travel around the country. But we, again, we really wanted to, to challenge ourselves. So yeah, we traveled all the way from Arkansas to Georgia, uh, up to South Carolina, back over into Louisiana, Alabama, Louisiana, Texas, up into Colorado, Utah, Arizona, Nevada, uh, up Idaho, Montana, and then into Canada, all while running a business. Half the time, we had two kids with us, a seven and a five-year-old, and four dogs. 
for those of you that follow us know we have four dogs, two of which mm -hmm. are not small. And yeah, we, we made it work and again. We really wanted to challenge ourselves to, okay, how efficient can we be? How productive can we be? And how can we, like, how can we really make this, make this not, not just make it work, but mm -hmm. make it grow and succeed. Mm -hmm. And we did, we did a pretty dang good job. I love this. So here's what I'd be curious about. When the two of you started to think, you know what? Does it begin with, you know what? Let's sell our two vehicles and and buy and we're gonna and and I'll pack tonight and we're gonna head on out of here. Talk to me. I I want to talk about like a couple of boring nuts and bolts things, like such yeah. as when did you first be like, or who? Wait a minute. I'll ask you another question. Who had the idea first, you or your wife? Definitely me, Adrena. Prior to meeting me, Adrena, her outdoor activities consisted of an outdoor mall, let alone camping and living in a trailer. It was definitely me. <laughs> I'm a massive Audrina fan, massive. Um, so I don't see that as a problem whatsoever. Uh, the outdoor mall thing, I think it's great. Yeah. I, I've i never done it. Like I camped once um, and people were wildly impressed that I got through the entire weekend without any sort of a major meltdown. Um, but it was two days. And so, and I was damn happy to come home. But so your idea how did you sell through, so to speak, to Audrina? It was actually very easy, to be honest. She's she's a trooper. She absolutely she's a huge trooper. Again, it was with we had a purpose for doing it, right? We wanted to prove that the we purpose? could do it. We wanted to prove that we could. Hey, we just wanted to prove that we can do it. And I'm a big advocate for challenging ourselves. If you want a different outcome, you have to do something different. And mm -hmm. in the grand scheme of things, life is pretty freaking easy in the U.S. Like for most mm -hmm. people, right? For mm -hmm. for most people, it is. Oh yeah. And so. I wanted to, I, I felt like we were, I was getting a little stagnant. Mm -hmm. You know, we were, I, I just, I had an agency beforehand. I moved into a company, you know, fractionally. That's why we were in Arkansas. Mm -hmm. Things were it was just kind of every day was the same sort of thing, you know, mm -hmm. and we were, what we wanted to accomplish with Summit Chasers or what we are going, we are accomplishing with Summit Chasers mm -hmm. is it's a different type of thing. Right. And it, it's what it takes you. You have to do something different in order to do something different. You have to evolve sometimes in order to evolve. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to force it. So especially in a short period of time. So we really wanted to, we both wanted to evolve. We both wanted to improve. We both wanted to prove a point and challenge ourselves. And that was, okay. that was, that was what we, that this, this was the way that we decided to do it. Right. It focused us. Um, it forced us to be very time. Like our time management had to be very on point. Our mm -hmm. priorities had to be very structured. Mm -hmm. Our daily processes and systems had to be very structured and followed our ability to overcome challenges was challenged <laughs> very mm -hmm. yep, right. uh, learning skills that uh, either I haven't had to use in a long time or I've never mm -hmm. used before and her having overcome challenges and situations and environments that she had never even been in before. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm super proud of her for, for those types of things mm -hmm. um, and just and making things work. And it really gave us, it really reinforced that things don't need to be imperfect for you to move forward and succeed. They don't need to be at all, right? And, and, and you know that, a lot of people know that, but to actually do it, and to actually live by that principle is one thing, but this really forced us to, to have to do that, right? I, I mean, I'm sitting here in a, in a nice place doing a podcast now. We have the ring light and all that kind of stuff set up. Most of the time we were doing, I was doing podcasts sitting outside and there'd be mm -hmm. bugs, bugs landing on me, the wind, dogs barking and that kind of stuff, but we did it and it was authentic content, right? And it worked, it, was, it worked out really mm -hmm. well. Um, so it's, that was kind of the biggest, the mm -hmm. biggest thing. It was like a forced, almost like a forced intentional evolution. I love this. So you got you, you, it, Audrina, she's a trooper. She, you know, it was easy for her to buy in or she bought in, we'll say. Um, from your thought, we're going to go do this to the beginning of the trip. What yeah. was the, what was the timeline? Like how long from, you know what, to, oh, did we forget anything? Uh, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. Oof. Well, we knew that we were, so it kind of started, we knew that we were moving. We knew that we wanted to get the heck out of Arkansas. Right, right. And so it started there. And then we had the opportunity to, and I, I'm I'm pretty outdoorsy. Like I like, mm -hmm. I like being uncomfortable. I like being in with the bugs and that kind of stuff mm -hmm. sometimes. Um, <laughs> so we, we have the four dogs. We wanted to be able to do a lot of that right. kind of stuff outdoors. You do the trails and that kind of stuff. So I, I, I sold the, I wanted to get rid of my truck anyways. So we sold my big truck. 
it was way too nice for me. Uh, I, I mean, I like nice things. I like capable things over nice things. And okay. Just, just uh, yeah, whatever. It just wasn't me. So I we got rid of the truck and got my Jeep, and it's like a nice Jeep Rubicon. Like it's meant to go over things. I and know. Yeah, 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 yeah. But they're cool looking though. Yeah, no, they're great. Like I love that. I love that. Really thing. functional. Other but really cool looking. Yeah, other vehicles are silly now to me. The things that I've taken this thing over, <laughs> and it's and the the situations it's got us out of. Um, and we we were we just went on the trails and we were we were out there doing our thing and you know how social media algorithms kind of work right and oh, we yeah. started seeing these these we call like overlanders and that kind of stuff which led to then full time RVers kind of thing and there's this couple that we were following that lives in their RV full time a very big RV by the way not like our trailer and they she runs a marketing company and then he just runs their content on YouTube and they they make it work and they live in their trailer. And most of the time they do what's called boondocking where you're not attached to anything. You're just parked somewhere and you live off. If you have solar or your batteries, whatever water's in your tanks and that's it. They were, they, they were having a ton of fun and the adventures that they were on and that kind of stuff. And we were like, we could probably do that. Cause we were looking at like, how, how can we challenge ourselves? How can we kind of prove this point that we're trying to make with summit chasers? And I think, I think, I think this is it. I think this mm -hmm. is it. Mm -hmm. So we're like, well, we just got rid of the truck. <laughs> so what are we going to do? So she's like, well, I, I kind of should probably get out of my, just my Range Rover. And so we went and looked at other, other vehicles and, and there's this other beautiful white Jeep Gladiator that we saw mm -hmm. and it was a diesel. And they're like, yeah, this thing could pull a pretty good little trailer. And we're like, okay, what's, you know, it's better than one Jeep too. <laughs> so, so we bought, we, we bought the, the diesel, uh, right. the diesel Jeep and that thing pulls. And then, so we had to get a trailer that was appropriate. And it's mm -hmm. like a 20, 21 foot trailer has a slide out. So it's, it's actually, it's pretty good. It's not bad. And that thing pulls it great. So that was our, that was our kit. That was our kit, a 21 foot grand design, 21 BH. And we've, that was it. Yeah. And then, so anyway, so from when we decided to do it from when we actually left, yeah, we decided to do it in February. And then we were out in end of April. Yeah. Okay. So oh a couple God, months. You're like 90 days? Yeah, no, no, not even a couple months, yeah. Yeah, a couple bad. months. My God. My mm -hmm. God. Maybe that was for the best in regards to not giving you an inordinate amount of time to either get afraid or back out or, or, or that sort of thing. You well, know? there's lots of time to be afraid. Uh, <laughs> lots of time to be afraid. It's, uh, well, because no, no, that was also the only reason it even took us that long is because we sold a lot of our stuff. Right. So all of our stuff now fits in a storage unit, you know, like a small storage unit. And that's that's our stuff. Like you don't need you don't need a lot to be successful. You don't need a lot to make an impact, right? And, and we've we're proven that. So a couple of very dear friends of mine uh, who have also been on who have been nice enough to be on the show uh, mm -hmm. have or they are currently in year four of mm -hmm. selling all their stuff, leaving their you know. They they weren't born in Philadelphia, but I know them from here and in, in, in the field that we were in mm -hmm. together and sold their home and all their stuff and blah, blah, blah. and they've been living pretty much life on the road. I mean, countries around the mm -hmm. world, and it, it's like the old two suitcases and you know per person, and and so it's amazing what you can adapt too yeah. so you hit the road you brought up earlier some of the things that you had to do to challenge yourself away from the which will be the fun part of this conversation <laughs> the bugs this city boy right i i i, I guess my tolerance for that is technically zero so i find that fun and funny heck i'll just ask you anyway uh whatever i'll come back to the uh the more like i said more businessy things but yeah. What was the biggest surprise for you or so far in yeah. regards to the actual living and challenging yourself? I'll say speak for you rather mm -hmm. than for Audrina. Where were you surprised whether it was good or bad? You hit the road, off we yeah. go, you know, all that sort of thing. Uh, one of the biggest surprise. That's a good question. Actually, I haven't really thought of what, the, mm -hmm. what kind of surprised me. I think some of it was how quickly we adapted, I think was mm. kind of surprising. Yeah. Uh, just because when you're in a situation with not really any plan B, you'd be right. really surprised what you can adapt to, right? But when mm -hmm. you do have a plan B, you kind of have a way you can sneak out, right? It's, it's a little bit yeah. different. But I think how quickly we adapted, but I think the other one is how, how, how I think, okay, I, I think I have the answer now. Mm. How 
efficiency, how, how big of a role efficiency and priorities play mm-hmm. in literally everything. And we knew that we were going to have to, okay, mm-hmm. we you know there's a certain amount of content we have to go and meet with clients. We have to do yep. marketing and administrative stuff and mm-hmm. you know work with our team and that kind of thing. So we, we knew like the hours that we had to work and that kind of stuff. Uh, so it, it was really prioritizing, being efficient, time management. You're really surprised what you can do in a day. And I think, I think we've even talked about this before, how I really quickly felt like, wow, we waste so much time. Mm. We waste so much time Mm -hmm. because we would, in a day, we would work for six, seven hours. Mm -hmm. We would pack everything up. Like we'd be in a campground or, or not in a campground, wherever we were staying, be able to pack everything up drive three or four hours to a new, completely new, completely different mm-hmm. location. Sometimes it'd be in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of Colorado, whatever it was. Hours to get Hours. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And we were able to stop, set up camp, mm-hmm. get the dogs out, mm-hmm. get, you know, cook dinner. And again, we're, we're cooking dinner. Like sometimes there'd be places where I have no other choice but to cook dinner over a campfire. So I'm starting a fire, doing all this kind of stuff and, you know, able to relax, have a beer, watch the sunset go down. Mm-hmm. So we're working six hours, packing up camp, looking after the kids, looking after the dogs, cooking, making sure that we're eating, right? Mm-hmm. Traveling hours, setting camp back up, getting all the stuff done, even working a little bit more, right? So just we were able to accomplish so much in a day. Mm-hmm. So it was really the big surprise. We, we would look back on it and be like, how much freaking time did we waste? Mm-hmm. Like our showers, because we're in a, so we'd, we'd have limited water in the in the trailer when we weren't hooked up to water. So the you know, the hours we could take were 30 seconds, a minute, right? For me, anyways, for Adrian to be two minutes, something like that. And so like oh how much God, time how we, <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So how much how much time we waste just doing those kind of things, right? right? Or getting up in the morning, even like there's it's just how efficient we are mm-hmm. capable of being and how mm-hmm. you know how much how much we just kind of let ourselves off the hook, I think, of wasting our our more our most valuable resource, which is the time we have. Mm-hmm. It's funny. One of the things that like one of the premises of my thoughts in terms of our conversation was mm-hmm. as summer starts to get a little bit like they, it gets a little dark or a little mm-hmm. earlier and that sort of thing. And there's this kind of a little bit of an ominous sort of way that goes. I love the way that you said back to the time management part. I'm curious, like you told me the realization, but my, I would be also curious as well. You never remind as it's not like I've known you for decades, but I've known you and I know you and I'm grateful as I'm grateful as all get out for that. And one of the things that I think about is you seem like a worker. You don't seem like somebody who squanders a lot of time yet. You're you're thinking, wait, I oh my God, there's there's mm-hmm. all of this. So what do you think in, in terms of the overall like that surprised you? What would you say what was one of the more things that impressed you about yourself in regards mm-hmm. to living that life? Literally, you described the Christ, just the packing up, the unpacking, mm-hmm. building, rebuilding, but, but you know, all that stuff, all hours, day, night, whatever, one minute showers if you're lucky. That impresses me. Mm-hmm. What impressed you? Oh, I think it's... It, it, it goes, I mean, I think it's like the challenges you have to overcome because you don't, A, I mean, if you're somebody who gets a trailer, for even if you buy a new trailer, right? first three weeks, something's going to break, right? So it's it's overcoming those challenges and things that, A, muscles I haven't had to flex before. I mean, I literally and figuratively, like mm-hmm. our shower was leaking. If shower leaks in the trailer, that's your living space. There's moldy. It's a small space. Like you have to fix it. It's not like, well, I can call somebody. They'll come in a week and they'll fix it. (laughs) You have to, it has to be fixed. So it's it's those challenges Mm -hmm. immediately overcoming them, figuring it out. Yep. I don't know what I do without Google. I don't know what people did without Google, but the the stuff we had to learn how to do, even Adrena had to learn how to do how I had to relearn how to do and and learn how to do Mm -hmm. to, to fix, to survive Again, the stakes are so much higher when we're out there because we would right. we would be part because we probably sixty percent of the time we weren't in campgrounds. We we were in middle of nowhere, some places. Um, we'd stay on farms, vineyards, breweries. Um, one of our we, we've talked about this beforehand. One of my favorite. You got, places it, you got it. Come on. Yeah, one of my favorite places was a petting zoo. So we got to stay at a petting zoo. Another place we stayed at a drive-in theater. 
right? We, we were watching Garfield with the kids and then put the kids to bed and then come back out and the new Bad Boys movie was on and we were staying in a in a drive-in movie theater. So when, when things go wrong, that's your house. Like I'm pulling my house behind me. And we when we were in like when we were in Texas, there was that was when all the tornadoes and hailstorms and stuff were going on. Right. We had a we had a maneuver. I had to learn how to read like robust, not just like your weather app. I had to learn how to read robust weather pattern apps and learn like where should we drive, like when do we have to park, when when can we, you know, what direction should I be facing and that kind of thing. And you can't predict a lot of that stuff too. But like in Texas, we got stuck in a tornado. Right. So we had to do some things to ensure that all of our stuff because our life is now packed up in a trailer behind us i have my kids with me we have four dogs right we have each other so the stakes are just that much higher right so your oh, yeah. ability your ability to make decisions is tested mm-hmm. your ability to make quick decisions under stress is tested your ability to figure out challenges is mm-hmm. tested and like we said when we when we got parked at my parents house for a little while we were like we, we don't complain about stuff near as much as we used to, right? <laughs> like, oh, no, the hot water only lasted 20 minutes. It's like, yeah, okay, well, you can have a, you can have a 20 minute shower, like focus on that part, right? So uh, <laughs> it's just the, the, the degree of challenges, I mm-hmm. feel like we, we have a much higher capacity for that. So I think that was something that really impressed us was just our ability to like coordinate, still be together afterwards too yeah. uh, to coordinate and, and and figure out things in high stakes situations and overcome challenges on the fly that like we can't just call somebody and fix like we have to figure this out now so so spectacular problem solving ability uh the ability to like manage stress mm-hmm. in all new ways the physicality I had asked and I jumped in and it was before and I, I didn't mean to, but I was going to say, how old are the kids? Seven and five. My daughter's seven. Yeah. My son's five. So young kids, what were they like? Like, cause it's obviously new for them too. Mm-hmm. You know, what do they think? Oh, they loved it. My kid, I'm so lucky. I mean, every dad, every parent's like, my kids are the best, but my kids right. are the best. Sorry. No, they, they were amazing. They were amazing. My daughter has a huge heart. She wants to help all the time. She listens. Mm. She's great. Um, she's thankful for things, right? So she's uh, she was great. She was great. My son, he's a typical boy. He's a nutcase. He, he loves the outdoors. Right. He loves dirt, mm-hmm. right? He, they all like the dogs. Basically, babysit them. Like we have a Doberman. I don't know if anybody knows anything about Dobermans, uh, other than the you know the fake stuff you see in movies and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. He is his name's Cage, and he is such. He's the best babysitter ever. He keeps mm-hmm. them out of danger. He stands mm-hmm. right in between anybody he doesn't know and them at all times. So it was it was good. We we're all kind of the first week or so they were everything was new. Everything was exciting. You know, right. I, I my son was convinced that the trailer was a transformer because oh, it turned okay. from a house sure. into a vehicle. So he was mm-hmm. like a transformer. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that was cool. Um, but after that, it was like we we're all just kind of one unit. Like even them, they I think they quickly realized the stakes of some things. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we, we tried to hide and protect them from some of this, those types of things, but I, th- I think they, they caught on to s- in some regard really quickly. And like, even like you see kids adjust and evolve in those cases, like they start to help with things and mm-hmm. they, they figured out, like my son figured out and my daughter figured out really quickly the process for breaking down camp and, and setting camp up and that kind of thing. So it, wow. it was, it was, it was good. It was good. I, I think for, I'm not saying to do that specifically if you have two kids, because it was a lot, especially running the business sure. at the same time with the dogs and everything. But it's uh, it it's definitely I think it, it's, it's something the kids are never going to forget. And I think it laid some pretty good you know foundations, character foundations for them as well. What would you say would be the difference between the fact of having the kids on part of the trip and not having them? What would you say was was the difference like for the both of you, for you and Audrey? Yeah. What was it like like how did the trip? changed yeah. having the kids not having the kids yes yeah, so we had them for two months and then they went back with their mom for a month so they with the kids it was just again it was just a matter of priorities and time management mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. just uh, that, that's all that's all it really so that was the biggest difference right the room i right. mean it's, again, it's a small trailer it was 18 feet of living space plus you know uh it had a, a pull out which you know made a little bit more room but right it was just a matter of just the priorities and the where the priorities fell on the list 
changed mm-hmm. a little bit. Like, and then the, the time changed a little bit. Like, again, they were really good as far as like, okay, we have a podcast right now. Well, it's raining out. Okay. You're in your bunks, you know, playing with toys. Like it was, it yeah. was fun. Um, it was boring. It was honestly, it was boring <laughs> without them there. Just okay. cause you, you get, to, you get yeah. to see the world through mm-hmm. their eyes. And because mm-hmm. Adrian and I were so systematized by that point, Right. Yeah, we started to miss some things, right? And we really noticed that we're starting to miss some cool things. Again, the U.S. is, that's why I tell a lot of people, like, see the U.S. before you get so obsessed with going and see other places because there's so many cool places here. Like, we're very, very lucky here in Canada, right? We're so lucky. So we we noticed that we started to miss some things. So having the kids, we got to see part of the world through their lens a little bit Mm -hmm. more. Like, there was a place that's outside of Amarillo, Texas, uh, and it had a whole bunch of old Cadillacs called the Cadillac Ranch. And had Cadillacs that looked like they fell nose deep, or sorry, nose first uh, into the ground. There's like 20 Cadillacs just, you know, on their you know, on their noses sticking on out of the noses, ground. Yeah, yeah, sticking out of the ground. And we stopped, and we you know we thought it was cool, but my son was like, "Did they fall from space?" And I was like, "You know what? Maybe yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah, they did." And he thought it was so cool. So just being able to see things mm-hmm. through their lens and and again, the, overcoming the challenges, but there's nothing like overcoming those kind of challenges and mm-hmm. having those experiences with your kids. You get to teach them some things and get their fingers dirty and that kind of stuff. And mm-hmm. like when we were at the petting zoo, like they, they just hung out with baby emus, uh, a baby cow, miniature horses and goats all day. That's what they did. Right. Like it was just, so to be able to see that type of thing through their eyes, it was really cool. I think that's amazing to me. And meanwhile, as you would say, you just talk about and the kids that, you know, we're doing a podcast and they would go play in their bunks. You're navigating a lot of business and starting things mm-hmm. and continuing things and growing things. Mm-hmm. Talk to me about that. You really briefly earlier talked about, you know, we're a couple of nonprofits and we're Atlanta, but, but, but I really believe that what's so powerful about this experience is yeah. that it would be challenging i would think if that's all you did mm-hmm. right if this was literally an endless vacation and you had to break up tear down move you know what i mean all live in a tornado or you know like like all of that would be plenty right um but that wasn't all and it wasn't all by a long shot you're there with a very strong business mind, the two of you talk to me about the ways that you were able to like, what do you like talk about most proud of like in terms from bringing it to the business Mm -hmm. things that you were able to do. You talked about Atlanta. Talk to me a little bit more about that. Yeah. So one of the things that we got really lucky to do, so this is unique to what we got to experience living on the road. So there's a, there's an app called harvest host. So you can sign up for it. It's like 180 bucks a year or nothing. Okay. But it has all these other businesses that would sign up for it. And us as the traveler could mm-hmm. go and book a night at some of these businesses for free, as long as we supported the business in some way. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we got to stay, you know, we, the first, the first, I'll never forget the first place we stayed at. It was a meadery, like not meat, but mead, like the old school drink. Right. So we stayed at a meadery and I ended up we were talking with the business owners and, and that kind of stuff. So we got to hear their stories and yeah. how they got into business and, what they're so passionate about. Like he was a biochemist who mm-hmm. was obsessed with yeast. Uh, whatever, at least their own. No, the science guy. So between yeah. Audrey and his fashion physicists and now your meadery guy, that's yeah. impressive. <laughs> yeah. So he, uh, no, exactly. So he, and so they started this, this amazing meadery and I wish I could mm-hmm. a juniper tree meadery and it's in, it's in Arkansas. Gorgeous mm-hmm. place. The best mead, beer, wine, whatever mm-hmm. I've ever had. So good. But getting to meet those types of business owners was amazing. So we got a lot of kind of pretty cool content and just conversations with them and where they come from and getting to meet kind of like the small, small businesses mm-hmm. you know, that I don't say they're forgotten about, but a lot of people don't, they're not perceived as sexy, right? They're, they're not like the breweries, and that kind of stuff, the farms, um, the mm-hmm. place, the things that the businesses that really keep, you know, the economy and people going, mm-hmm. they feed us There's nothing, nothing, you know, really important about that. Uh, so it was really cool to be able to see that side of things and get to be able to support mm-hmm. some of them and start to work with, with, with some of them on so just some things that they like, I, I, it's hard for us to see things from their perspective where we kind of forget about those types of businesses, but there's a lot of opportunities that they just don't see 
or that they haven't heard of yet or hasn't made right. it to them yet, you know, uh, just because they're not, they, they don't live online type of thing. They live in their communities, right? Mm. So that, that's, that, that, that was, that was really, really cool. But no, so again, because we had to be so focused and because when we were working, like we had to, an hour of work when we were there, had to make up for like two or three when we weren't on the road. Okay. It had to be that efficient. It had to be that focused. Mm -hmm. So it really helped us a delegate our team grew. So we're actually the business grew by 300% while we were on the road. Oh my God. Uh, because we delegated because we practice what we preach, uh, which mm -hmm. is setting up other people in our business for success and then delegating mm -hmm. to them. So we really got super, super clear us as founders, what our roles are, what our roles should be mm -hmm. and where our strengths are and leverage them as much as possible. We would implant them into a calendar, those activities and those tasks into a calendar. Mm -hmm. And we never we just didn't, we couldn't deviate unless a challenge come up, unless there was a tornado or something like that, but then we'd have plan B. Um, so it was just, it was getting so clear on what we should be doing as the founders, where our strengths were leveraging mm -hmm. those and sticking to the time. And when we are working, it's focused, it's focused working. There's no distractions. There's nothing. It's, it's focused as opposed to, I think when, when we get, you know, almost we get time, like it's almost, we almost have too much time. And yeah. hands, I'll do it. I'll have an hour to do this one little thing mm -hmm. when really it could take you 10 minutes. You know, like you had to be really, really focused. Like we're so, you know, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Like we're uh, like we're brats with our time. I'm so, a good, you know. great choice of word. And by the way, speaking of brats, summer, that, that is like it, it, it's, it's yeah. perfect. In the pop yeah, like just, but yeah, yeah exactly. We, do, we, just, we take it for granted. We take we take the time we have for granted. And it's just not like I said, to being efficient, like we have we can get so much done in a day. Mm -hmm. Right when, when we have to, and when when we really focus. So mm -hmm. when we were working, we were really working, and uh, it it got to the point, yeah, where we we grew quite a bit while we were there, just based on that that alone, right? So it was a, it was a good kind of reinforcement for mm -hmm. what we do with our clients, and that it works, and that it's it is important, and uh, yeah, so that, that was big. That was big. That was huge. How many client meetings did you have, or have you had? while living that life and i'm going to say in person client meetings in person oh yeah. well there was i mean probably a hundred in atlanta because uh, we were there for three weeks so mm -hmm. there was a ton in atlanta mm -hmm. juniper tree um bison farm probably just on the road uh, a couple well, one in zion mm -hmm. I don't know, 20, 30, something like that. Something, yeah. 20, 30 meetings where you might this sound nuts, but I was just thinking it's like when you're home, and I'll speak for me, how everything has to be like kind of just so when, yeah. when I have a client meeting, like I need to know exactly what the shirt's going to be and mm -hmm. it doesn't look right. And uh, well, four weeks out from a haircut and, and you're talking about you might have gotten a one minute shower or a two minute shower or you might have gotten this or you might have gotten that. What was it like from a confidence perspective? I'll say in the beginning, that's why I'm just saying that you're yeah. coming and going from in-person client meetings. Did that mm -hmm. phase you at all? I mean, what was it like? Um, no, it, it's, it was authentic, right? Like mm -hmm. one thing nice. is, especially in person, like you can create such a, at least a quicker, you can create a pretty quick connection with people right, right away. Cause now you have mm -hmm. a little bit more to play off. You have your body language, mm -hmm. you, know, you have your story, you have a little bit more time, yeah. that type of thing. Uh, so no, it didn't affect confidence or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I think at all, like we had a, we had a meeting with a, a winery owner and she just came up her and her husband just, we went out to her, uh, they had a little gazebo out back and we walked from our trailer over there. I was in, I, I, Drina was in sweatpants. I I don't know. I don't even, I don't know what I was wearing, but I was in a house wearing a hat. I know that. And we just sat down and had some of their wine and uh, we shared some of the mead that we got from the meadery and we uh, talked business. <laughs> I gotta tell you, that's why I brought it up because it's like it's amazing. Like you said, the way that you're able, like, like to me, physical connection, there's nothing like it. And yeah. and there's no and there's like it, it can be so easy to not do it. It can be so easy to set all kinds of constraints and rules and things like that. It's just a reminder that it's like nothing beats the chemistry mm -hmm. uh, of an in-person no relationship no especially when you meet them where they're at you don't try to you don't try to be somebody else you don't try to 
you, know, you don't try to you know flex on them i guess mm-hmm. that's you know another gen z word is it a gen z maybe maybe before that i don't know i, I was gonna um, say i know i know of what you mean yeah so i, I know what i mean not, uh, like, but if you meet them like they're just people like we're all just people right it's not yeah. right and obviously there's there's times and places where you want to you know dress appropriately and you want to right. um you want to be appear more professional and that kind of stuff so you you have to really that's where really reading the intent of the meeting and understanding who you're talking to understand like communicating beforehand maybe a little bit um and and again just be authentic be authentic and if they're if they don't if they don't like you then they don't like you i mean i don't yeah. there's lots of people that, that that will for most people uh so it that's that's what it really came down to right like these are again the, the people on that specific trip mm-hmm. sure we have we have clients who you know run you know fairly large businesses right mm-hmm. i probably wouldn't we're all up to them wearing my ripped lululemons and a stinky shirt after i've only showered once in a week uh, but for the, for these individuals like these are hard workers that are out in the field all day right in, in their vineyard or their winery or on their farm mm-hmm. you know we, we stayed at a cattle ranch farm right they uh, and we got our we got our jeep stuck in their field yeah. and, uh, and then they came out and pulled us out with their tractor and mm-hmm. we had we had a great we had a great relationship with them so it's these are just people right i think the metrics are great i think the the business acumen is great and again i think it's it's such a big deal to be able like you said meet people where they're at i think one of the things that 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 i'm continually impressed by is the sense that that you made a commitment to do it and got wildly popular takeaways from you know what i mean wildly successful pot and pot, wildly successful takeaways from from the experience yeah. the metrics are strong the relationships are strong you got to do things that you yeah. never did before what's it like as your life has become and I don't know if normal, more normal is is the word I want to use because maybe that's the normal, you know, maybe that's the best normal, mm-hmm. but whatever it is, more typical, yeah. right? You're not navigating on the road or fighting tornadoes or, you know what I mean? Or, or vicious wild animals like emus or whatever, right? Yeah. But... <laughs> <laughs> I'm a city boy. I don't get out that one. But um, but but what I mean is, now that it's back, what have you been able to incorporate now from mm. that, or does it fade? What? How does it work for you now? Like, no, I mean, it would be ridiculous to say it doesn't fade, right? right. It would be a, little, be a little wild as you're back in the comforts of a house type of thing, yeah. or in a city mm-hmm. and that kind of. But there's definitely is there's definitely it creates anchor points like experiences like that mm-hmm. you know yeah experiences like that that force you to evolve they become yes. anchor points they, they become strong anchor points in your life mm-hmm. so now you have something and if you're intentional mm-hmm. and you're you're aware of okay i'm starting to fall off like i'm not, not abiding by my calendar quite as strongly right mm. so I'm, not, I'm not mm-hmm. getting up you know, right away in the morning or I'm not, mm-hmm. whatever it is. I'm not as productive in an hour, whatever it is. As long as you're aware of that, you have an anchor point that A, you can do it, right? And and mm-hmm. B, you kind of remember you know, how uncomfortable that was. You, you remember what you're able to overcome, the challenges you're able to overcome. And then things all of a sudden seem like whatever. Like, oh, the internet's not working quite as well today. Oh, cool. I just have to go up and like reset the modem. Oh, that's so annoying. As opposed to, okay, I have to go walk 200 feet, realign my Starlink or put it 400 feet on the other side and attach it, you know, 10 foot in a tree in order mm-hmm. to get good internet so that I can do this podcast that I'm about to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, things don't seem quite as bad and you just, you just do it. So it, the, as long as you hold on to, and you're aware and, and you, you hold on to those anchor points that you've created mm-hmm. with those experiences, you can snap yourself out of it. The, the, Mm. The thing is, you have to create those anchor points. You have to challenge yourself. You have to create those times where it's like, oh, I, ha- I can do this. Oh, I can overcome this. Oh, this mm-hmm. isn't that big of a deal. Oh, okay, I, I'm capable of that. So why am I holding myself to a different standard right now? I need to get this done. I need to get up and get moving. Mm-hmm. Or I, I can be more efficient with this. Okay, here's a process that we can create. Uh, we haven't done this process before, but we could probably make it more efficient because we did a similar one when we were living in a trailer of four dogs, two kids traveling every day. Mm-hmm. So again, if you had to put yourself in those situations, I'm not saying to do exactly what we did. I don't, you know, I wouldn't give that advice to most people. 
Um, yeah. But that I think that's the power of overcoming those things, whether they're forced, or they're put upon you, or whether you put them upon yourself. I think they're important to go through if you want success. So you brought up, the, I love the choice of words, but uh, like anchor points. And so I, I would ask you, um, what would you say is one new personal anchor point that you're able to lean into? Like that, that's new from prior to being <laughs> traveling, being yeah. on the road. It's just your ability to figure shit out that you don't okay. currently know how to figure out. I think really like I've, and then I had some of that before. Just, I mean, if you go watch the first episode, you can hear a little bit about kind of my origin story, so to speak. Well, um, you figured a lot out. Uh, you figure, figure, figure a lot out, right? But you figure you figure a lot about yourself when it comes to like physical, like figuring things out you haven't do before. Mm -hmm. Like when we were traveling in the summer, so if we didn't have air conditioning, we would like we were screwed, completely screwed. So our air conditioning froze one time, which is weird. It froze in the heat, but our air conditioning yeah. froze and started leaking and almost didn't stop working. Mm -hmm. I had to figure out how to fix an air conditioning unit because we couldn't get anybody out there because we were in a vineyard in the middle of Alabama. So I had to figure out how to how to fix an air conditioning unit. And I did. And I did. Well, everybody else was outside uh, in the shade, trying to cool down as much as possible. Luckily, we had hookups at this one place, but I had to figure out how to fix the air conditioning unit. And I did. And it wasn't as hard as you think. I think a lot of things, I think it's the fear holds us back a lot. It makes us tell stories in our head that are worse than reality really is. Mm -hmm. So you think, oh, an air conditioning, I can't, I can't fix an air conditioning unit. Those, right? things, are, those yeah. things are complicated. How does it make air cold? That makes like, how am I going to figure right. that out? And then you get in there and you start learning about it, like, oh, this is more simple than I thought. Oh, this mm -hmm. is, you know, I can, this makes way more sense than, mm -hmm. you know, initially thought that it would. All right. Or when the plumbing, you know, when the shower started leaking, I had to figure out how to fix that. Uh, there's a lot, you know, with the Jeeps, we had to learn how to, there's something, I can't remember what happened with one of the Jeeps. We had to figure out how to fix, fix something in the Jeep on the road. And, it would just, you figure it out. And again, navigating weather, right? Like we got so freaked out where we almost didn't even go to Texas. We wanted to go to Texas because that's where Adrena's mom's mom lives because mm -hmm. the weather was so crazy. There was all the tornadoes and oh yeah, water, yeah, yeah. watermelon sized hail and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. we were, but we, we figured it out. We figured out how to navigate. We figured out, you know, patterns and how to take shelter when we needed to. And, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of stuff. So it's, it's, you, you're much more capable than you, think of so i think it's i think it my anchor point was like oh i could figure this out like i mm -hmm. like even if it's something that's not at all in my wheelhouse like i could i could figure this out you're gonna figure it out yeah i love that from a business side you've already brought up and it came up a couple of times your your sense of time management mm -hmm. and, and 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 the amount of time is there another business anchor point that, that you've got, and maybe it's the same. You could figure things out. Maybe it's the same thing, but from a business side, mm. it, do you have a new anchor point now for you or for Summit Chasers? Is there yeah. a new central anchor point? I think I think there's more. I think it's just added to our list of anchor points because I think you okay. need more than mm -hmm. one in some cases, right? Sure. Uh, but no, like I always knew like when it comes to business, just because I've been in it, I've been in businesses and stuff for so long, I think. Mm -hmm it's a, uh, you know, an understanding that I can figure something out. I have that, I have enough pool of proof to pull from that I can figure things out there. So it wasn't necessarily right. that, but it was that a, we have a very capable team to mm. trust the team. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think it reinforced a few anchor points and one that if you look at a business from a 30,000 foot view, it really comes mm -hmm. down to two things. That's people and culture. If you have yeah. the right people, mm -hmm. that's what creates, you know, initially that's, that's what creates the culture or, mm -hmm. or keeps the culture consistent and uh, protects it. Uh, so us having the right people and always making sure that that is a huge focal point for us mm -hmm. and for any, and for even the businesses that we work with, like making sure that they have the frameworks that we teach them and continue to hold them accountable to it, um, to bring the right people in and, and developing the right people and developing the wrong people out type of thing. I think, oh. I think it reinforced that anchor like just how important it really it really is uh and we, we again we knew it was before but then when it gets so again we had to we had to delegate so much right, <laughs> right? we had to delegate so much that it's uh really it really really reinforced that part uh and the other one 
I would probably say systems processes. It doesn't matter mm -hmm. how, how, you know, young of a business you are, you know, startups. Okay. You know, you're, you're experimenting, you're still figuring out what, what works, but as you do figure out what works, mm -hmm. make it, make it an S SOP standardized, mm -hmm. standardized mm -hmm. as much as you can, uh, and systemize things as much as you can soon, sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, do it, create it and then teach it. Don't teach it and then create it later type of thing. Um, mm -hmm. So that, that was a big one because that's what saved us, even just in our personal, you know, the time management. And we had, we had a system and a checklist for when we broke down and set camp up to make sure that we didn't, you know, leave a, leave a support down. And as we drive out, we break a support for the trailer. And then all of a sudden our trailer's leaning at night. Um, so it was, it was a lot of, a lot of that, like systems and processes are just mm -hmm. so important and they're so important so that you can not just so you have them and so that you're doing things consistently so that when something goes wrong, you can look at this process and be like, okay, where did it break? Where do I improve it? Right. Sort of mm -hmm. thing. So that, that was, um, that was another one that was again, more reinforced, I think. And it was also just understanding, oh, we could be successful. Like imagine if we applied these systems and this time management, right, this philosophy and mindset type of thing. And we had, and we weren't traveling and running mm -hmm. away from, you know, storms and that kind of stuff. Uh, it was reinforced mm -hmm. that like, oh, like we're going to be successful. And we already knew that, but it was nice to kind of get mm -hmm. that, you know, extra reinforcement. Speaking of reinforcement, you brought it up several times. And I love the way that you kept repeating the fact of, you know, the right people, the right people. You've told me this before. I just want to make sure that I have it right. You currently have six people on your team. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So away from the tasks of the task management, you know what I mean? Or, or, or mm -hmm. the job description or whatever, what are some of the intangible things that you saw uh, that led you to those individuals? Uh, it was an alignment and passion for sure. It was alignment and passion. And it mm -hmm. was an, mm -hmm. it was an early understanding of what we were doing and what we were trying to accomplish. Mm -hmm. uh, people that weren't that tended not to be the right fit were ones that they didn't it was hard for them to conceptualize what we were trying to accomplish who we were working with what we were providing mm -hmm. uh, and it wasn't for a lack of their understanding or their their skills in the game so mm -hmm. to speak that was just a testament to their the way they saw things their where their passions were how they want to help people mm -hmm. uh, and and their buy-in to the vision and kind of mission of what we we have, right? Because if you have that and they have willing people that are willing to, you know, to fight for it, yeah. they're willing, willing to, to sacrifice, mm -hmm. obviously they're not going to sacrifice as much as you as the founder or the business owner, mm -hmm. but you find people who are, who are willing to sacrifice for at least the outcome that you're trying to create your vision mm -hmm. and mission of the company. Then you know that you have somebody who, if they, there's, if they have a skill that they don't have that they need to have, they'll go figure it out. Right, and we'll, we'll obviously wow. support them in figuring it out, wow. type of thing. Um, and communication was another big one. Talking to the communication guy, uh, their ability you're right, to but you're pretty damn yeah. strong at it, man. Yeah, and it's just not that it's not even their communication ability. It was so much their willingness to communicate is a was a big one, um, which then translate into better communication skills over time. Over time, so that that was another that was another really really big one. Was their alignment their buy-in, their initial understanding and uh, their willingness to communicate were the big ones. Cause we, we had a, we had a really good, again, our, our one of our business partners, Chrissy Neefsi, she's, mm -hmm. uh, she's a senior HR growth partner for like Yahoo. She was with next door, Spotify, or not right. Spotify, Snapchat. I love she's, Chrissy. She's great. Yeah. Yeah. She's, she's amazing. So she, she has a huge, like we, getting talented people isn't mm -hmm. difficult for us. Right. Mm -hmm. But the right, talented people like an a player over here isn't an a player with us mm -hmm. it's just the way it is um we have high standards we have principles that we abide by it kind of it, it which is good because it pushes away the people that aren't the right fit but it really m magnetizes the people who are the right fit type of thing and and i i think a lot of businesses miss out on that uh because they're not willing to that they feel like they're missing out on something if they create principles abide by them even if it hurts in the short term mm -hmm. but it's going to be it's going to pay back multiple um, in the future, right? Long term. So we've, yeah, we. If you're not, it's not. If you're not a good fit with us, it's pretty obvious right away, mm -hmm. and we can part as friends. And it's that's the way we want it. And that's the way you want it. So, do you think 
you, the culture, the buying in, the ability to to communicate some of the traits that you brought up in terms of your A team, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Do you think because they have those intangibles, it was easier for you to delegate more when you had to, or do you think it was simply the necessity that you had to? Mm -hmm. um, and, and how did it work? Because that's not always easy, even when you mean well, or yeah. whether you've got really good people, what do you think it was that enabled you to like have do the trust fall, so to speak, or whatever, to get you to be able to stay in your lane and mm -hmm. those to be able to help more. Yeah. So you we know? we try to uh, we try to have what we we call like an idea meritocracy, right? So everybody mm -hmm. when they have the, nobody keeps ideas to themselves, right? There's not a hierarchy. Like they they okay on paper they work for us, but they know we all work together type of thing, right? Yeah. So everyone put their hands up to help, right? We all have a singular vision, right? We we, we all want to accomplish the same thing. Mm -hmm. So when we're going through some of the challenges and, and where we want to go and some of the goals that we have and the strategies that we need to implement, they, they put their hands up. Mm -hmm. That was that, that simple, really. <laughs> you find the right people that they, they'll put their hands up, right? Mm -hmm. um, some of it, you know, there's a little bit of training that need to be involved in, in, mm -hmm. in some cases, right? But no, it was, it was, you get the right people though, they, they will, especially when you're a small business, right? You get a little bit bigger, it's a little bit different. You have to, uh, you know, intentionally and clearly identify roles and create roles and what the outcome of the role needs to be but when you're a small business when you're a small business in terms of people mm -hmm. like number of people like we are you get the right people that they're, they're going to put their hands up mm -hmm. right and for the most part if they put their hands up it's because they a they're fully capable or they're passionate about getting it done right so i that was it <laughs> that was really it I love it. They'll go figure things out. From the last time you were on the show, I asked you the question in regards to how do you define authenticity? Different question, but similar in, in scope, which is that this, now, so you've seen more now. You're you're one yeah, of those very different fortunate person. people. You've seen more. You've <laughs> been different places. You've seen more things as like the way that you said uh, you saw Cadillacs falling from space uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and a bunch of other things in the middle, too. Based on what you've seen, how would you like? What draws you? You you use the term authenticity a lot. Mm -hmm. Based upon what you've observed over these last few months, uh, what what draws you to an authentic person now? Like, what are the mm -hmm. traits that draws you to someone that's authentic? Uh, I mean, the, the easy answer is their actions back up their words. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, Very they, wise man said that in an earlier episode. Yeah, um, yeah, right. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, it's. Um, yeah. But also, no, that, that, that's a really good question. It's. I mean, I, you know, I like to say it's a feeling. It's the vibe, mm -hmm. right? I mean, a part of it is that you just get a feeling. Sure. For it. But mm -hmm. you you can tell when somebody's just trying to impress you. You can tell mm -hmm. when somebody's just trying to when there's an ulterior motive, mm -hmm. right? When somebody's just tagging on to a trend. Um, which I know you, you utilize trends and expect for talking about social media cases. You can go watch our last live we did together where we had a little bit of fun talking about. Oh my God. The, so do you are so mindful. Um, yeah, that, that, that trend. Um, <laughs> yeah. Like, and, and some people who follow those trends are just doing it for vanity. Like somebody right. who's not chasing the vanity metrics, who is mm -hmm. taking action and is not afraid to look bad to, mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm. they're not afraid to look bad to accomplish mm -hmm. the goal. Mm -hmm. Right. They're not, they're not afraid to, you know, not follow the the trends in order mm -hmm. to accomplish a specific goal. Like they're willing to stay on track. They're willing to follow through mm -hmm. uh, on what they say they're going to do and mm -hmm. the goals that they have, the strategy that they put in place. That's probably the biggest. Yeah, that's probably the biggest, biggest ones. It's a beautiful image. And I just think for myself, like I said, these are the best reminders for me, like the sense of appreciation of time. It's one thing to manage it well, but I think it's a real, it's really living proof of appreciation uh, mm -hmm. when and when someone values time and the proof of it, like you said, is in their actions. And it's like, all right, so what do you do with time? It's really important for me. It's one of the ways that I get to keep learning and growing as well, too. Uh, folks, you got to keep following Zach Carlin and Summit Chasers Network. We make it easy for you so you'll have the link to the brand new swank 
Summers, some Summers, Summit Chasers Network, <laughs> Communications Pro, eh? um, dot com website, swank, brand new and mm -hmm. packed with cool stuff. Um, these good folks, Zach, Adrena, and the team are doing three live streams currently per week. No pressure. Mm -hmm. Zach, you don't have to do that forever. But at the moment, you have to be so pretty damn easy to find. How else are we finding you, brother? LinkedIn, probably the place I'm most active. Uh, you can find me on, uh, what's the other one? Instagram, there we go. Uh, the Nomad Coach <laughs> on there. Uh, and I think that's I mean, Facebook, I think. Zach Carlin on Facebook. Summit Chasers Network on Facebook. SummitChasersNetwork.com. Uh, Summit Chasers Productions YouTube channel. We're really, really active on our YouTube channel mm -hmm. podcast. Yeah. We have two, two podcasts that uh, Adrena and I do. Um, I have one, the Summit Chasers podcast. She has hers where she uh, she interviews uh, founders of nonprofits. Really, really cool. Really, really cool mission that she's on with yeah. that podcast. So, And that's all on the Summit Chasers Productions mm -hmm. uh, YouTube channel uh spotify apple all those types of places we try to be as many places as possible now that i'm listing them out i'm like oh cool we're a little bit everywhere uh, right which is it's got to feel damn good right i mean yeah. you yeah. are that visible folks we make it easy because we just want you to find them zach we get to talk to each other all the time and that makes me really really happy thanks so much for showing up for me again today it, it, it's an absolute blast to know you anytime man no i really really appreciate it happy to be here I'm so glad. And folks, you just started another episode of Your Message Received. You'll chase summits, travel the world, get to do way cool things because we, again, bring on way cool people like Zach Carlin to walk the walk. Thanks so much for showing up for us. Keep watching, listening, liking, sharing, subscribing. And we will keep driving content through your front door. John Duffin here, Duffin Media. Thanks so much for tuning in. Zach Carlin, you're the best. And we will talk soon. Bye. And now, making its way across the finish line, your message received has been a production of Duffin Media.